All right, welcome back. Well, we do know that the president is, is arrived in New York and uh, it's going to be at the UNGA, uh, that's the General Assembly. And then uh, we understand that some matters, including vaccine equity, but some things are going on already behind the scenes. So we do have our state house correspondent, Gloria Omizuki, who is on the trip. And so she joins us now to give us an update on what is going on. Hello, Gloria. Good morning. Very good morning, I might say. Really uh, very early there. How are you doing, Gloria? And say that again, Chamberlain. Uh, so it's uh, about 2 a.m. right now. Of course. So thank you. The general debate begins today. The president will be attending the opening session in person as the UN headquarters. Uh, the attendance is definitely restrictive. The number of delegates have been uh, scaled back to about as, as much as four as against what was tenable, you know, in pre-pandemic era. So for many nations, the theme is quite apt and compelling because of the harrowing experience countries have gone through as a result of this pandemic. You know, only recently, the United Nations you know, Secretary General Antonio Guterres highlighted the need for a global vaccination plan you know, to particularly curb the virus, like he said, in the global south. You know, even though we know that the virus you know, is pervasive here you know, in the global north, as it were, essentially harping on the need to you know, double up production efforts and equity distribution of vaccines. And this is an area, even the Director General of the World Trade Organization, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Ewell, has given much emphasis to. You know, only last night she met with the president uh, here in Manhattan and uh, basically asked for more support in getting manufacturers of vaccines to, uh, to invest in not just Nigeria, but on the continent. Now, she categorically said that inequity, you know, in access to vaccine is not acceptable. Now, there is, you know, there are interesting figures out there. A paltry 4%, even less, in Africa have been vaccinated, while about 50% in developed countries have received vaccination. So beyond the figures, what is, what is really the implication, one would ask, for Africa and even the world? It's definitely not looking good. Every country knows that. This asymmetrical distribution is what essentially the United Nations is warring against. The solution, according to the WTA, uh, the World Trade Organization DG, you know, insists last night is that the, uh, the manufacturing of vaccines should take precedence within the continent and the critical concentration you know, on trade as a way to, you know, further pull investment. So she's hoping that in the next two to three years, there'll be significant changes, hopefully, according to her. I actually asked her that question, what sort of timeline is she looking at, you know, to see this come to fruition, as she said, in the next two to three years? You know, that's the solution she has. And so she met with the president, uh, uh, asking him for extra support towards making this happen. I mean, critically, the, the, the world knows that this is where, you know, this is pivotal to, you know, ultimate uh, recovery from the pandemic. And uh, even as, as a matter of fact, the U.S. president, she told us last night, has called for a conference on COVID-19 in Washington and has invited high-profile leaders to attend. So we'll probably be closely monitoring that. You know, there'll be further commitments, you know, hopefully by developed nations towards Africa you know, in, in general. Uh, James? Is, to know that um, such consultations are happening at that level. And of course, as you said, we'll just wait to see how it trickles down in the coming days, months and years. And I, I see that, I mean, as it stands, the president looks like he'll have a very busy schedule in the next few days in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you perhaps give us some highlights, uh, something to at least look forward to uh, regarding his schedule in New York? Okay, so um, on Friday, before Friday, when he's built to address world leaders, uh, where he'll be focusing on salient issues, climate change, the issues of development, good governance, security, uh, there will be uh, the commemoration of the anniversary of the adoption of Durban Declaration and, and the Program of Action. Now, this 20-year commemoration is quite critical as well for Africa. Because essentially, it, it, this, this uh, declaration came in the aftermath of a world conference on racism. And right now, even though there's uh, there a, a latest report by the High Commissioner back then, you know, he still harped on the need for, you know, uh, 
greater approaches towards handling racism. I mean, the systemic you know, racism is, is still very much entrenched in, in, you know, in countries. And, and as a matter of fact, xenophobia in South Africa, Nigerians have been affected and all of that. Why do we still have these issues? So this is what this um, Durban Declaration will focus on. I mean, the commemoration of this and Nigeria is participating, will see to um, re-scrutinizing how countries have adhered um, largely to that program of action, basically. And then I also know that on Thursday, uh, there'll be other meetings. There's a full system summit and um, the high level dialogue on energy happening on the 24th. Uh, I think the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation will be representing the President uh, on that occasion. So uh, these are a couple of activities going to happen before Friday and the President will address world leaders. Well, I know that there are times that the President usually just uh, speaks to Nigerians, uh, you know, after everything, those who are living abroad there. So do we know if any such thing is going to happen this time? So because um, activities have largely been scaled back, uh, I'm not quite sure that is on the program for this year. I know usually, like you said, we, you know, Nigerians and diaspora, you know, usually hold meetings with the president. This time around, I'm not sure that's on the schedule. Uh, we we'll just wait and see if that happens before Friday. If not, definitely that is not going to happen as usual. Like, you know, I mentioned earlier, um, activities have been scaled back, delegation have been scaled back, and the, the, the event is really um, highly restrictive. So we'll see uh, not the usual, but I mean, a partial restoration of the person-to-person -person diplomacy that the UN is synonymous with. Uh, you know, if I could just put you on the spot here, Gloria, what for you is, I mean, highlights? What are you looking forward to, I mean, in, in this lineup of events, perhaps? So the thing is that um, COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, the theme is quite apt. The, the theme is quite compelling. You find that most countries are jostling to come in person. I mean, looking at over 80 countries, uh, sorry, 80 um, heads of delegation or government coming in person, that's to show that um, there's, there's this um, struggle to want to make their voices heard, especially for countries in the global south. And so aside the pandemic issues, I'm also looking at how this will shape future conversations and, you know, and determine you know, how um, we sort out issues, salient issues of insecurity, poverty, economy, you know, and uh, inequality. I mean, these are basically items that are on the SDG goals. And uh, Nigeria might not have significantly achieved any of the, the objectives on that list. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, fruitful conversations, cogent conversations that would take us, you know, meaningfully, you know, towards where we ought to be, at least by 2030, when that uh, SDG agenda is supposed to um, uh, come to fruition. Nice. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Gloria Omezeke, our State House correspondent. So you can uh, just go ahead and uh, rest as much as you can. Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you.